This video will show some plots of the radial wave functions and radial distribution functions of the hydrogen atom atomic orbital wave functions. So we'll start off with R10 of R. So I've got the values plotted there, plotted for R greater than zero. Two times charge over A naught Bohr radius to the three halves e to the minus rho. Rho being Z times R times A naught Z is the charge of our nucleus for a hydrogen atom. That is the number of protons, which is 1. The Bohr radius <clears throat> is equal to 0 0.529 angstroms. On this graph, I just have it set equal to 1. So this is being plotted in units of Bohr radius. So first we have our atomic orbital wave function of the 1s orbital, R10. And we see that it has that behavior of being just a constant times a decaying exponential decaying pretty quickly, going basically to nothing by the time it's at uh, 5a0. For the 2s orbital, r20 of r, we see that it's also decaying, but it has a linear Laguerre polynomial in there. So it actually goes down, reaches 0, goes to a, min goes to a minimum, and then comes back up. This is the value where it has that radial node, which we saw in our previous plots and discussion of nodes. R21 would be a 2p function, 2pz, 2px, 2py, and that just goes up, reaches a maximum, and then slowly decays away down to zero. For R30, that is a 3s function in blue here, so it has two radial nodes, crosses zero twice, decaying away even more slowly. It has a higher energy, it's, it has a closer energy to zero, it's further away from our proton and doesn't feel it as strongly. R31 in orange would be a 3p orbital, one radial node, and it has an angular node, but this is just the radial part that we're looking at, going up, decaying away, again taking its time and decaying. R32 being the uh, radial function of a 3d orbital, zero radial nodes and very slowly decaying away. So those are all the uh, those are all the wave functions, but what we're interested in also in looking at is the radial distribution function. So it's not only uh, this wave function, but it's the wave function squared, or psi star psi, times r squared, the volume element for how big the surface area is as we go to larger values of r. This is what we used in the previous video to calculate the most probable radius of the 1s orbital. <clears throat> so when we do that, if I start looking just at the 1s uh, for demonstration, so we have this function, we're going to square it and we're going to multiply it times a parabola, r squared. So it's going to start at 0, go up, reach a maximum, and then the decay will take over and it will go down. And that's exactly what we see. It goes up like r squared, reaches a maximum and decays away. That maximum in probability occurs at r equals 1 or 1a0, the Bohr radius for the 1s orbital. All right, for 2s, we have our radial node, remember. So our radial node means there's a point where there's no electron density at that radius. So we see most of our density is at a larger radius and there's a little bit inside that first little uh, sphere of density. For the 2p, no radial nodes, it just goes up, reaches a maximum, and goes back down. Um, take note that the actual maximum, the most likely radius for this p orbital is actually inside that of the 2s orbital. So 2p is actually inside the, the value for 2s. For 3s, we have two radial nodes getting bigger in density as we go further out. 3p, we have one radial node. Again, its maximum is located just inside the maximum for, uh, for 3s. Notice in each case, each maximum is inside the subsequent maximum for the s of the same principal quantum number. And finally, the 3d shell. We have the d function reaching a single maximum, which is inside the final maximum of the 3p and the 3s, but they both have maxima which are inside the value of 3d. 
So these are the plots for our orbitals. Let me take one more, um, one more point of note before we go. Maybe I'll use the 2p. That one's a little more spread out. Okay, so I have the 2p wave function, or sorry, 2s. The 2s wave function and the 2s radial distribution function. We can also note the effect of the charge of the nucleus. If we make this helium plus or lithium 2 plus or beryllium 3 plus, we notice that the wave function and the distribution both get much tighter as our charge goes up. The bigger the nucleus is, the, the higher its charge, the more it's going to pull that electron closer to it and make it uh, more tightly bound to that nucleus.